Hello and welcome to the next episode of Fridays with Fintelect. My guest today is Philip Hunkin, Director of the Financial Intelligence Unit, that is the FIU of the Isle of Man. Phil, a very warm welcome to you, and I'm absolutely delighted and honored to have you here with us today. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for your invitation. I'm delighted to be here as well and look forward to answering your, um, the questions and hopefully people find them uh, in interesting. Absolutely. So Phil, to start with, you know, the Isle of Man uh, uh, FIU has been set up fairly recently in 2016. Uh, can you give our listeners a quick overview of, let's say, the number and type of reporting entities in the Isle of Man? Any early challenges that the FIU faced since it was formed? And any major successes, especially in terms of bringing together the financial sector and other reporting entities, both from a regulatory and development point of view, to fulfill its obligations? Uh, yes, um, well, the, the Isle of Man um, has 18 different reporting business types, uh, ranging from high street banks to virtual asset exchanges. Uh, we also receive suspicious activity reports from e-gaming companies, uh, TCSPs, private banks, uh, insurance companies, accountants, advocates, and estate agents. Uh, as well as reporters from the regulated industries, we receive intelligence reports from domestic and international law enforcement partners as well as the domestic financial and gaming regulators, uh, the Financial Services Authority and the Gambling Supervision Commission. Over 2018 and 2019, we, we received 3,900 SARS. Whilst the bulk of these SARS were made under the Proceeds of Crime Act uh, and 17 were in respect of money laundering, we are now seeing an increase in disclosures made under Section 24 of the FIU Act, 20 of 20%. Uh, I'll come back to this uh, later. We also received requests to undertake intelligence searches uh, and analysis from domestic and international law enforcement and regulatory partners. Uh, the Arleman FIU is a member of the Egmont Group of FIUs, uh, which now numbers 165 countries and covers the globe. We, we send requests for research and analysis via the Egmont Secure Web and also spontaneously share information where we believe it may assist that jurisdiction in investigating money laundering and terrorist financing. Um, talking about the number and type of reporting entities, the Isle of Man um, has a reputation as a center of excellence for expatriate banking and provides a secure location for investments uh, with 11 banking groups and deposits of 35 billion pounds. Uh, the island specializes in providing banking services to expat expatriates and international corporates, including commercial, lending to UK companies on UK property. Uh, the Isle of Man is also home to 12 authorized life insurance companies, uh, the largest single financial services sector on the island, generating 16.4% of our gross domestic, domestic product and holds 72 billion pounds in assets uh, invested through the Isle of Man insurance companies. We have over 70 licensed corporate and trust services providers um, home to top international fiduciary businesses, a cornerstone of the local economy accounting for over 2,500 jobs on the island. We have over 20 registered professional pension scheme administrators and the current funds under management in the Isle of Man total 18 uh, billion pounds. All of the major international accounting networks are present on the Isle of Man um, and lawyers are consistently ranked in the tier one of legal directories such as the Legal 500 and Chambers Global. E-gaming is the largest business sector in the Isle of Man, accounting for 21% of GDP. Um, the Isle of Man also hosts a digital and blockchain sector. Uh, the new challenges we've had since the establishment um, of the FIU in 2016, um, we started working with uh, new legislation, uh, which are new to both us and the reporting entities. Um, we recognized the need for an outreach program uh, that explain the structure of the newly formed FIU, uh, the legislation uh, it would be working with, and the impact it would have on industry. As we are no longer a, a function of the Isle of Man Police, uh, but instead an independent body corporate, we were also keen to get across what we hoped would be a change in our organisational culture. Uh, we spoke to a large number of entities we deal with through attending at their offices, speaking at large-scale financial crime events, and addressing representative industry bodies. One of the major challenges was explaining our new legislation and the three Ps, the power to require information, 
under Section 18. The penalty for further disclosing FIU intelligence without FIU consent and the protection offered to reporters under Section 24. As I mentioned previously, Section 24 allows for reports to be made to the FIU where the reporter has considered all the legislation and they may report under such as the Proceeds of Crime, uh, Anti-Terrorism uh, Crime Act uh, for terrorist financing and the EU UN sanctions breaches, but does not consider these appropriate. Nonetheless, the reporter feels that sharing the information with the FIU will assist the FIU in undertaking its general functions, um, which are defined under the Act. the Act. If disclosed under Section 24, the reporter is protected from action for breach of confidence or confidentiality. This protection is now widely used by industry, uh, where they cannot confer money laundering or terrorist financing. But in all their professional experience, they know that something is just, just isn't right. A challenge, a challenge to all civil service based financial functions is the retention of skilled staff. We have come to expect excellent responses to our adverts when we are seeking to recruit staff and been very pleased with all our new appointees. We do however struggle to retain, retain staff as once trained they are familiar with a wide, wide range of AML CFT work. They are very attractive to industry with whom we struggle to compete. Nonetheless we continue to, to be an employer of choice for both industry and academic applicants, and we will continue to build a broad experience base. Our major successes, um, whilst I'm unable to comment on specific cases, the FIU and the intelligence of its supplies has provided leads to a number of significant financial crime investigations, leading to convictions, the confiscation of assets, and the repatriation of funds to victims. More widely, we view the relationship we have built with industry and the two regulators as evidence of a change of culture and increase in trust uh, in respect to our aims and objectives. Excellent. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Phil. So, Phil, uh, coming you know, to your personal career journey, uh, I think it is rather unique and interesting because you were head of FIU uh, of Cook Islands and before that with the Guernsey Border Agency. Uh, what are some of the learnings that you bring with you to your present role? Well, my background is a, is a customs officer. I, I worked for Guernsey Customs in, uh, and subsequently the Guernsey Border Agency for 34 years. Um, it's been a, a fascinating career and I've been privileged to work in a variety of disciplines and roles. Uh, my first foray into financial crime investigation was back in 1990 when I found myself deployed to, the, to Guernsey's first joint financial crimes unit where I sat alongside a similarly deployed police sergeant waiting for the phone to ring and trying to work out how to receive our first SARS. Well, a lot, a lot has changed since then. Uh, financial intelligence development has come a long way. Um, I've been fortunate to be, have been involved with the Egmont Group of Financial Intelligence Units since 2009 and have attended every, every meeting since bar one. Uh, whilst for most people, the Egmont Group is about sharing financial information between FIUs, um, it's the work they do in adding huge value to the professionalizing FIUs through training and training products and through its leadership and learning and support arm, ECAFEL, and through its pursuit of excellence. The high level of focus brought by this inform the information exchange working group on the various crimes and how the FIUs can best respond, uh, how to identify, combat, educate to prevent these crimes. I've learned that successfully prosecuting money laundering is extremely challenging. FIU really does have to access the widest possible range of intelligence and financial information to develop viable cases for criminal investigation teams to investigate so that they can deliver cases to the prosecutors to prosecute. It is critical that parallel financial investigations are conducted in tandem with the criminal investigation. Confiscating and recovering the proceeds of crime are also challenging. Um, international finance is by its description international the sharing of information between jurisdictions is vital and I would suggest remains an area in which jurisdictions and FIUs can improve significantly. Criminals or indeed terrorists can move money around the globe with a tap of their mobile or a swipe on their tablet. The sharing of financial intelligence is light years away from this. Uh, working relationships with the finance sector have improved very significantly. They have the skills, knowledge and resources to work with FIUs to significantly improve FIU's quality of output, um, the promotion of public-private partnerships 
and examples such as the UK's Gimlet um, and the Fintel Alliance in Australia um, are, are examples that are being widely uh, replicated. These need to continue to develop and mature. Uh, serious and organized crime is motivated by one thing and one thing only, and that is money. It might be a cliche, but nothing is truer. Follow the money. Um, FIUs are still relatively new in a country's financial crime architecture, and I believe there is still a long way to go with their development. And I see FIUs as absolutely central to countries' AML CFT systems, and more needs to be done to develop their role. Capacity and capabilities need to continue to be improved, and they, re they remain by far the best model to come back and prevent money laundering and terrorist financing. Um, I read an article with regards to the recent FinCEN leaks where a common commentator observed that the entire resources of the U US FIU, FinCEN, cost less than the government remitted in social security claims to fictitious persons. In other, in other words, inadequate for the global role it should be playing. Right, thanks, uh, thanks Phil. Uh, so Phil, given the reputation of islands such as the Isle of Man being looked upon as a global tax haven, uh, can you outline the steps that you have taken to strengthen beneficial ownership controls? Yes, the, um, the Isle of Man enacted the Beneficial Owner Act, Ownership Act in 2017. Uh, that requires all Isle of Man companies to identify beneficial ownership and provide this information to the company registry. This information is available to law enforcement. Uh, the Isle of Man is committed to uh, three things. Uh, during 2021 to work collaboratively with the EU on the interconnection of the island's central registers of the beneficial ownership of companies with those in the EU. Uh, secondly, to enable access to our central registers of beneficial ownership of companies to obliged entities for due diligence purposes before the end of 2022. And thirdly, the EU is to publish an implementation review of the fifth Money Laundering Directive in January 2022. Within 12 months of this publication, we'll bring forward our, to, um, to our own parliament legislative, legislative proposals to establish public ac access to beneficial ownership data of companies held on a central register in line with the principles of the EU's fifth MLD. Right. So, uh, Phil, how closely does the FIU work with the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority? I mean, earlier this year, in August, the FSA penalised a local insurance company for £87,000. Uh, which also included failures to comply with the AML checks. So has the FIU uh, also penalized any entity since its formation? And uh, what is your view on imposing of penalties? The FIU works closely with the uh, Financial Supervisory uh, Authority. Both agencies uh, share information using our respective legislation. Uh, we undertake large scale analysis of data with a view to bringing focus on, on our prior priorities identifying emerging risk and seeking met methods to mitigate such risks. Where we identify issues within a reporting entity, um, in the first instance, we seek to meet with them and explain our concerns. For example, in respect of the standard of uh, suspect activity reports being submitted by the entity. If that low level engagement does not bear fruit, we would then share our concerns with the uh, Financial Services Authority and seek to formalize the engagement with the, the entity. We would always prefer to explain and where appropriate educate rather than seek an immediate sanction against an entity. Uh, the sharing of information works both ways. And when the uh, Financial S uh, Supervision Authority performs its uh, inspection activity, they will seek to provide the FIU with feedback on the performance on the financial institution. And the FIU will, FIU will build that into its analytical work or if appropriate, develop a case for criminal investigation. Uh, the FIU does not have any powers to impose penalties and does not undertake regulatory supervision or enforcement. Uh, the use of financial penalties is one of the a number of options available to the, uh, to the FSA and was introduced following the, the uh, Money Bell Mutual Evaluation in 2016. Right. So, Phil, earlier uh, this year in April, there was an update from the FIU about a risk assessment on the impact of COVID-19. Uh, in respect of financial crime uh, on the Isle of Man, uh, both domestically and internationally. Uh, are there any takeaways from this assessment that you're able to share publicly? Well, I'm pleased to say the Isle of Man has been COVID free uh, within the community for a while now. 
And as such, things are relatively back to normal, both in terms of health and working practices, um, with, with the exception of the borders. As reported by many other jurisdictions, the Alaman experienced a small dip in the number of uh, suspicious activity reports submitted to the FIU in April 2020. However, further analysis identified that in previous years, there was also a dip in April before increasing again in May. So SAR figures have remained stable. Uh, this shows that the Isle of Man's regulated sector is robust enough to ensure that AML CFT requirements are adhered to, even in cases where the environment becomes significantly more challenging. Um, it was identified in the risk assessment that drug-related drug offences are a main domestic risk to the Isle of Man. And the closure of the borders was going to put a strain on those trans that transport drugs and cash between the Isle of Man and the UK. It was therefore predicted that the postal system would be utilised in order for the supply of drugs to continue. As a result of this, the postal services and the Isle of Man Customs and Excise, and uh, with their colleagues from the constabulary, have increased scrutiny on packages, leading to more seizures and arrests for investigation, uh, with, with which the, the FIU assists. Uh, the FIU has received a minimal amount of disclosures that, that directly relate to COVID, and the FIU will be conducting a follow-up review to assess how the pandemic has affected the Isle of Man in terms of money laundering and terrorist financing. Uh, one particular incident that stands out um, involved uh, PPE, uh, it was being purchased by the Isle of Man government. Um, it related to some international suspicions relating to fraud. However, the, the FIU worked with the health authority um, and the PPE order was successfully fulfilled. Um, but I think we may have had a, a near miss uh, on that occasion. Right. Uh, so, you know, speaking about uh, public-private partnerships, uh, you know, which have gained a lot of um, uh, importance in the last few years, uh, is the Isle of Man part, uh, FIU part of any PPP and uh, what has it been your experience uh, in this area? Um, the Isle of Man have yet to establish a formal uh, public-private partnership. Um, we do, however, participate in domestic groups and work very closely with MLROs and compliance personnel. Um, there is an Isle of Man AML CFT advisory group that meets regularly and is formed of government agencies, agencies and various representatives of the financial sector. Uh, the, the FIU regularly meets with industry groups and focuses on some of the following enhancing uh, trust in the relationship with the private sector, um, enhancing the quality of reporting and additional informational input, uh, look at designing common approaches and identifying desirable uh, deliverables, um, enhancing the level of expertise and knowledge for all partners. We seek to facilitate increased feedback uh, to reporting entities, and we also seek to provide more flexibility, agility, and opportunities to adjust the fast-changing money laundering terrorist financing threat environment, and provide a better understanding of money laundering and terrorist financing risks. Uh, we're working towards the development of a new um, uh, non-traditional partnership, uh, both with the private sector as well as public sector partners. Um, and a recent initiative, we have met with all uh, government agencies and promoted the appointment of government department money laundering reporting officers and have provided training, guidance and support. This will support the prevention of financial crime and fraud risks in the public sector. Um, I'm also very focused on operationalizing public private partnerships and we'll be seeking to move this element forward um, in the not too distant future. Right. So, uh, Phil, what would you say are the critical success factors for the Isle of Man in ensuring that, you know, money laundering and terrorist financing risks are actually uh, minimized in a sustainable manner? Yes, the, the FIU prioritize, prioritizes training and ensures that all of its staff are trained to a high level and all have or working towards uh, International Compliance Association qualifications. Operationally, this gives the officers more understanding and knowledge of risks and how to identify them in their day-to-day -day work. Uh, strategically, the FIU's knowledge function uses various sources to identify emerging and current threats to the island in terms of money laundering and terrorist financing and conducts analysis on these threats. Uh, the analysis becomes the basis of how the FIU reacts to the risks, identifying and how it works towards mitigating them. This can be in the form of further outreach to industry to ensure they have knowledge and focus on the matter. 
working more closely with our partner agencies to mitigate the risks and monitoring or reviewing internal procedures. Examples of this working in practice is the recent COVID risk assessment, uh, which the FIU identified that there were emerging risks to the pandemic and published the risk assessment quickly to both public and internal government agencies to raise awareness and mitigate the risks identified. Um, the FOU has also recognised the current focus from the UK Financial Intelligence Unit and organisations such as FATF uh, on human trafficking and as such has uh, reviewed the risk to the Isle of Man and produced a typologist document and a supporting informative video. Uh, the Isle of Man Constabulary identified that there is an increasing number of vulnerable people being used as money mules to transfer funds that are the proceeds of drugs related activities. And the FIU is in the process of outreaching to a wide audience <coughs> in order to increase knowledge, uh, reduce the risk and protect victims. And the Isle of Man is a relatively small community, which is beneficial in terms of the relationships between the industry and the FIU and other partner agencies. All are fairly receptive to change, which may be required to mitigate the risks. And there is good lines of communication in place, which is important for working together as an island to minimize them. Right. So, uh, Phil, in closing, uh, what would you say are some of the notable achievements of the Isle of Man FIU that you're really proud of? And what are your ongoing expectations from all the reporting entities? Well, the, the FIU would not have any successes in respect of uh, money laundering or terrorist financing without the cooperation of many people and organizations. Um, as mentioned previously, we have undertaken much outreach work with reporting entities, but we also work closely with the uh, Financial Supervisory Authority, the Gambling Supervision Commission, uh, the um, Isle of Man Police and its Economic Crime Unit, um, and the Attorneys General's Chambers uh, and their International Cooperation and Asset Recovery Team. We also with the, work with the Customs and Excise Division, who are responsible for the investigation of breaches of financial sanctions. Uh, we also work with the aircraft and shipping registries. Uh, in regards to our ongoing expectations from reporting entities, we will encourage dialogue and the continued improvement in reporting standards. We have identified a number of money laundering reporting officers who are producing reports of an exceptional quality. And our ambition must be to play our part in improving the standards across industry. Whilst we have issued guidance in respect of the completion and submission of suspicious activity reports, there is no substitute for discussion where there are queries or concerns as to how much to include and the potential offences. Um, so we seek to, to improve the quality of SAR reporting um, across industry. Excellent. Phil, thank you so much for joining us today. It was an absolute pleasure having you uh, here with us. And thanks a lot for, for your time. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you.